The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Central Kitsap, Washington on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 37974. Please utilize this five digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation. Starting first at the front bumper on the outer edge face of the front bumper, dual air horns. Just inside that location is where you'll find your mechanical siren. Protruding through the front bumper from the frame rail area, you'll find two tow hooks. These are not intended for towing of the vehicle. Moving just to the right of that location is where you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker. Moving up onto the cab face, turn indicator marker light located on the outer edge. Headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. High beam is located on the inside. Just up from this location on the outer edge, you'll find a side facing camera. As we move back toward the face of the front of the vehicle, you'll find your emergency warning light cluster, two on each side, they are red. Windshield wipers just above that location, unit identifier CKFR. And as we move to the outer edge, you'll find your mirror housing a flat and convex mirror. Moving up to the brow of the apparatus, you'll find five identification clearance lights located directly in the center on the brow. You'll find a forward facing floodlight. As we move to the outer edge at a slight angle, you'll find additional side facing scene lights. And then as we move to the very top section, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. In the very center of the light bar is where you'll find your Opticom. Let's move around to the driver's side of the vehicle, full view and then we'll start in with the cab section next. Starting first at the front axle, where you'll find Goodyear tires, Alcoa wheel, and a visual sight gauge into the center axle area. At the A pillar, you'll find part of the lower zone. This is your emergency warning light. As we move up, you'll find a marker turn indicator light. You do have keyed door entry. These are the latch combinations here. As we move right next to that, you'll find the grab handle for gaining entry and exit in and out of the vehicle. Just over the front wheel is where you'll find additional storage here in the cab area. D-handle gains you access. Moving toward the rear cab just above the notch area is where you'll find a lower zone emergency warning light. And as we move to the very front section, this is the mirror housing a flat and convex mirror. Also, side-facing cab scene light located on the upper portion. As we move to the very rear cab wall, it's where you'll find your LED water tank level indicator. Let's move to the body now. We'll find at the very bottom section in front and rear of the rear axle, folding wheel chalk storage. Also, a marker turn indicator light just in front of the rear axle. There are two access doors located here for SCBA storage and also your DEF and diesel fill locations. In the center area here of the axle area is where you'll find a side facing emergency warning light, once again, part of the lower zone. Moving up to the side or hatch area is where you'll find two side facing scene lights and at the rear an emergency warning light. Let's move around to the rear of the apparatus where you'll find start at the top, a emergency warning light, brake, turn, and reverse light cluster on both the passenger and driver's side. Just up from that location is your rear scene lights, and then at the very top section, emergency warning lights. Let's move down into the center area where you'll find three cupped switches. These control your hose bed sides and also lighting in the area of your hose bed. Traffic advisor located in the center section. You'll also find two rear discharges. These are two and a half inch. As we move to the very top section on the right, it's where you'll find your ladder storage location, 24 foot and 14 foot ladder. Just above that, you'll find an additional storage location in the upper hatch, and then just below that for additional ladder storage. Recessed backup camera just to the right hand side. Let's move around now to the passenger side of the vehicle. Same configuration and layout. Uh, as we move to the body section, the difference here is where your side exhaust ports out. 
I would like to point out extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures. As we move to the cab, little difference here, this is the air inlet for the Aero XT. And then also, as we move just forward to that location, this is that side facing camera. Let's go ahead and move now inside the cab area. We'll start first with the driver's space. Affixed to the driver door panel is where you'll find all of our safety warning placard information. Just above that, you'll find a grab handle, electric door locks, window controls, which are electric, and then also your door lock and latch, and also manual lock. As we move now to the base or floor area, I'd like to point out this yellow placard. The yellow placard indicating the date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, and cold tire inflation. Also, the VIN number is located here. Also, along with all of your fluid capacities for each component, fluid capacity, and also fluid type. As we move to the floor in the driver's space, you'll find an air horn foot pedal and also electronic siren foot pedal. Moving up to about the left knee of the operator, you'll find your master battery switch, quarter turn, and is the red switch. Also the region inhibit, ABS diagnostics, engine transmission, ABS diagnostic port, and display port. Below that, you'll find the DPF region switch, and then also engine diagnostics and tech module. Above that, window control located here on the left-hand side. Also, you'll find electronic siren, an air horn switch, and then also the siren brake for your mechanical siren. That's the red switch on the far right. Let's go ahead and move up to the dash area. We'll identify a few items within the dash cluster. We'll start on the far left-hand side where you'll find your four-way flasher, start and ignition switch. Just inside that location, you'll find a switch labeled EM, which stands for Emergency Master. This will engage or disengage all emergency lights, headlight, and panel switch. To the right, OK to engage the high idle indicator and switch. As we move to the left, you'll find the tachometer and speedometer located directly in the center. On the left side of the cluster, transmission, oil, def level, and water temp. On the right side, volts, fuel level, front and rear air. Diagnostic tally information will display above and also below the tachometer and speedometer. In additional information will display inside the window below the tachometer and speedometer. Just a quick look to the right hand side of the operator. First, the yellow diamond, pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. Your vehicle is equipped with a command zone. This is the display module. Moving now to your transmission, which is a push button pad. Let's go back to the command zone. Tremendous amount of information right here at your fingertips. It is a touch screen and then also function buttons just below. All information can be gathered from this. Please see the owner's manual for additional information. We have a digital pump pressure readout and then also a water tank level indicator. Down at the very bottom, we have some caution and warning information. I would like to point out some of the switches. We have an engine brake on and off, settings for low, medium, and high, and off-road traction. Mirror heat and stationary OK to pump and roll indicator, and then your water pump switch. Allison transmission pad, informational note here to pump in neutral. As we move to the right, the flat and convex mirror controls for the right and left mirror. In the center, you'll find the heating and air conditioning and defrost module. Below that is where you'll find the module for your electronic siren. As we move just to the left of this image, it's where you'll find 12 volt access via USB style type A. Just a general view here from the front looking toward the rear, you'll find two seats forward facing on the rear cab wall. Identifying a few things behind the driver's seat at the very top of the cabinet, you'll find your battery charger. When plugged into shoreline power, that becomes active. Also behind the driver's seat, a speaker with volume control for your backup camera. As we look overhead, I'd like to point out this yellow placard indicating the height of the vehicle, 10 feet, 1 inch, length of the vehicle, 34 feet, 3 inches, gross vehicle weight rating, 45,000 pounds. If you make any adjustments to your vehicle, they may alter any of these, please update this placard for your operator. Also, just to the right of this location, we have a few switches located here. First, we'll start with your emergency master, roof light, front warning, and side warning. Just down from that, lower rear warning, upper rear warning, high beam flash, and an opticom switch. 
Moving just to the right additional switch panel, we'll start at the very top section with the driver scene, front scene, passenger scene, rear scene. White light cancel, also alley lights, perimeter lights, and load manager. The green lights are indicating that the uh, system is active. That's the green light around the outer edge, indicating the function is on. Moving just to the right, this is your traffic advisor control module. Located between the officer and driver in the lower section is where you'll find this light flashing. It means do not move your apparatus. You may have a compartment or door open. As we move back to the exterior, once again, Alcoa wheel, Goodyear tires, just up from this location, is an additional compartment. D-handle gains us access into the space. There is an adjustable shelf, dry deck material, and also shoreline outlet located in here, meaning when plugged into shoreline, this outlet is active. As we move down to the rear cab area, let's take a look at the door panel. Once again, affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, grab handle, electric window control, and then also a door lock. As we move toward the center, we have two rear-facing EMS compartments with netting. As we move overhead, there are push on and off white and red lens lights over the seat area. Also, speakers for your AM FM weather band radio. Fold up seats on the outer edge. In the very center, an additional EMS compartment with webbing. General view here of those compartments at the very top. Once again, this is your battery charger. In the center, access panel for gaining access to the oil and transmission for your daily checks. General view here of the center compartment. And then at the very top section on the officer side, there is an additional outlet when plugged into shoreline power. Those will become active. Behind the officer is the control module for your radio and then also your EQ2B module. Let's move back to the exterior. As we move to the very top section in the notched compartment area, we'll start at the very top with backboard storage on the forward section with a Velcro strap. There is also long handled tool storage or pike pole storage located here for two and then also additional long handled storage here or hose storage. As we move down into the next section in the lower area you'll find two speed lays or cross lays located in this area. They are removable and then also a inch and a half discharge port along with a indication here regarding warning due to the hoses coming from aloft, there's the possibility of entanglement. As we move to the pump panel on the driver's side, you'll find your main inlet, also a two and a half inch locally controlled ball valve, driver's side number one, and also warning here because caps may be under pressure, be cautious when opening the cap. As we move just to the right, you'll find an air supply and also air outlet supply. Just down from that location, you'll find an additional warning label indicating warning, fall injury, do not ride while on the vehicle, and also when climbing on or off the vehicle, make sure you face the vehicle. At the very bottom, you'll find all of our color-coded and labeled discharge drains. Moving further to the right, you'll find a driver's side auxiliary inlet. This is locally controlled via the ball valve, female inlet. You do have a fold out step. This is tied to the do not move your apparatus. At the very top section, you'll find a red or booster line. Cutouts located here on the side. We'll move now into the pump panel area. Let's start first at the very top section. If the truck is properly engaged from inside the cab, this light will be illuminating, indicating pump engaged. We do have some additional engine information in this gray module. There's also tally lights, stop engine, check engine, fuel, and then also oil, battery, and water temp. Just to the right in the gray area, you'll, faster, you'll find your master intake gauge and then master discharge gauge. Between the two of those are the test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They're currently plugged and are utilized for testing purposes. Up in the right, you'll find a visual indicator and also audible speaker for the PCM fault. The outer edge of the speaker does rotate to increase or decrease sound. All of our discharges are clustered within this area. They are color coded and labeled and also indicated in red that they are foam capable. Your fire pump primer is a push to prime air, minimum practice 1000 RPMs. To the right, pressure throttle governor, digital display, and then also a tank water level indicator. 
just below that you'll find the increase or decrease your throttle and also mode preset functions. As we move down, you'll find the minimum operation maintenance schedule. We'll go over that in just a few moments. This is your foam pro for your foam system. Just to the right of the location, you have a digital indicator here for foam level. And then also just to the right, we'll find a recirculating line. This is a twist, not a pull. Moving to the right, you'll find your deluge discharge. There's a pressure gauge at the top and then indicator valve position in the center wheel. Just a reminder, only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment and that's after proper training. There are two electric control valves located here and then also your tank fill and tank to pump just to the left. Once again, the very top section, deluge discharge. Also have additional information here regarding your foam, po foam pro for instructions and operating specifications. Just below that is the primer and reel discharge and then all of our color-coded discharges. Behind the pan door is where you'll find your foam fill operation handle. Uh, the door has a description here for the instructions for its use. Also your manual pump override is located in this area. It's a protected switch. Back to the minimum, minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 test pressures. On the left is the associated GPM at that test pressure, and on the right, the associated RPM. Govern speed while in pump mode, 2,000 RPMs. Also, five-digit job number is on this placard. Let's go ahead and move inside some of the compartments now. We'll identify some of the items within the compartment space. First, let's start with all compartments in the body section do have a ventilation system. This gray box is the timer for that. When plugged into shoreline power, this will become active. Also, the vent tube located throughout the passenger and driver's side and rear compartment. Pull-out trays are located release on the lower right-hand side. As we move into the compartment next, you'll find two SCBA with retaining straps in front and rear of the axle. Just below that in the front section, you'll find the blue cap. This is your def fill location. As we move to the silver cap, this is your diesel ultra low sulfur diesel fill location. Close up here of those images. You have a 4.5 US gallon def tank. Once again, it's the blue cap. As we move to the rear of the axle, this is the ultra low sulfur diesel fill location. It's the silver cap and a retaining cap holder. Moving to the next compartment back, you'll find adjustable shelves. Also, you'll find LED lighting on both right and left side of the compartment. In this compartment, you'll find the storage location for your LED box light. All compartments now are open, giving a full view of the side of the vehicle. Let's move around to the rear of the apparatus next. Starting at the rear of the apparatus, you'll find hose bed dividers. These are adjustable depending on hose bed side. At the very top section, you'll also find a drop down cover for that hose bed so you can load additional hose on top. As we move to the right rear section, you'll find a warning here regarding fall hazard. Always face the vehicle while climbing on it. And of course, fall hazard, never ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. For accessing your hose bed cover, you'll find the driver's side and passenger side hose bed cover access, and then also rear scene lights. There are two two and a half inch discharges located here at the rear of the apparatus. Also a warning regarding pressure hazards, caps may be under pressure, and then also a entanglement hazard because those lines coming from aloft, there is the possible entanglement. Below that, traffic advisor. Just underneath this is the very bottom next to the tailboard. You have an additional storage here with lighting. As we move to the upper right hand side or passenger side, additional storage here from the rear section. Just below that you'll find long handle tool storage and also a 10 foot folding ladder. 14 foot roof, 24 foot extension are located in the lower section. In the very top is where you'll find your backup camera and a fold down step for gaining access to the compartment at the very top. As we move now to the passenger side of the vehicle, adjustable shelving located here, LED lighting and also your ventilation system. Adjustable shelf in the center compartment 
SCBA bottle storage to the rear of the axle, three SCBA bottles to the forward section. There are two SCBA bottles and an oxygen bottle storage. I've got an image of that here next. This is going to be the upper right hand corner is for your oxygen bottle. I would like to point out just below this, extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures do exist. Be very cautious where you park your vehicle, especially during region operations, provide safety for that. As we move forward to that location in this compartment, you'll find a divider and also an adjustable shelf. This is also the location of your Shoreline S1 breaker panel. Just below that, you'll find your cab tilt. We do have some danger and warning placards on that. Be cautious when tilting your cab. As we move forward to that location, same configuration and layout as we have on the driver's side. It matches the passenger side upper section now and then as we move down to the lower section. Let's move down to the notch area where you'll find your passenger side pump panel. Just a couple of warning placards also here. Uh, once again entanglement hazard and then also a fall injury. Do not climb onto the vehicle uh, unless you're facing the vehicle and then also warning regarding pressure hazard. We do have your main passenger side inlet located here. As we move just to the right, you'll find a two and a half inch discharge. It is an electric valve, so therefore it has an override. That's the override located there. As we move down, you'll find the passenger side auxiliary inlet. It is a two and a half inch locally controlled. As we move to the right hand side, this is the override for your large diameter discharge located on the passenger side. And then as I move to the very bottom section, you'll find all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains. You'll also find a running board that does flip outward. It is tied to the do not move your apparatus if it is not stored. Moving now into the cab area onto the passenger side. First let's start with the door panel. A fixed door panel, safety and warning placard information, grab handle, electric window control, and your door lock latch combination. Overhead once again pushing on and off red or white lens lights. Fold down seats here, non-SCBA. This is a clean cab. Moving forward, you'll find additional storage locations on the passenger side and then also the heater section down in the lower portion. We're to the exterior where the air inlet is for your engine in the upper corner. That is the electric button release for your cab doors. As we move down into the officer space, let's start with the door panel, a fixed door panel, safety and warning placard information, electric window control and electric door locks, grab handle, latch and also door lock control. Air horn and electric siren foot pedals located at the floor. The vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system. This is your airbag located here. Also a warning regarding any of that of mounting of any equipment within this area due to the airbag. To the right, fill location for your windshield wiper fluid. As we move to the dash itself, you'll find a digital speedometer located just to the left on the engine cowling. You'll also find 12 volt access and then also your vehicle data recording port. Overhead, once again, push on and off red or white lens lights. To the very far right is your firecom system for volume control squelch and then also radio aux buttons. To the left hand side, you'll find emergency lighting, alley lights, and also a siren break. AM FM weather band radio located just to the left and then underneath that radio is where you'll find your Firecom wireless base system. Moving toward the rear portion of the seat, this is where you'll find your mechanical siren, your EQ2B. Moving also outside, we have all compartments open. Let's go on top of the truck and take a look at a full view. As we move to the forward section of the cab, this is where you'll find your night scan. Also air conditioning in the forward section. This is still considered a non-walking surface and that's because we don't have handrails even though there is a gripped surface. We have that identified here with this warning placard. As we move to the dunnage area, this is the location for your master stream device and also red line. As we look to the red line itself, you'll find on the left is your master stream open and close and then to the right and the very back side free tension spool and manual rewind. Deluge discharge valve, close up here of your discharge. 
Then as we move further back to the dunnage area, you'll find your water tank top fill and also foam fill. Just a couple of things for your foam. We do have a warning placard here indicating do not mix different brands or consistencies for the possibility of foam failure. As we move to the outer edge of the dunnage is where you'll find the hatch compartments. There are two on the passenger side and two on the driver's side for access. We also have this yellow indicator around the edge of the hose bed cover indicating the walking surface. Moving now to the chassis and cab area with the cab tilted, let's go through a few items within this area. First, starting uh, with your front end, this is the tow location for specific, specifically towing the vehicle. The other ones are for operational use. This is where you'd actually tow the vehicle if you needed to. As we move into the engine area, I'd like to point out when the cab has been fully tilted, maintain equal pressure on both the left and right cylinder, place the safety bar into position, and do not lower the cab onto the safety bar. Your vehicle is equipped with a Cummins X12 engine. You can see your power steering fill location reservoir at the top, radiator located in the very front top section with a visual sight gauge and also a fill location. Battery box does have jumper studs for positive and negative in the very bottom section of the battery box. You'll also find the electric motor for your cab tilt and reservoir just in front of that location. General view here of the cab and chassis are next. There'll be no additional comments until the very end. This concludes the additional images. Congratulations, Central Kitsap, Washington, on your new Pierce Fire apparatus. If you have any questions regarding your vehicle, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.